This film is intended for eye surgeons for training and education purposes. Viewer discretion is strongly recommended. Hi, he is an elderly man who is around 85 years old. General health is not so good. He is very hard on hearing. He has some urinary problems and probably he is on some prostate, anti-prostate drugs as well for his urinary problems. And the complexity is that he has got this double auditory gym and also pupil which refuses to dilate and the patient is not willing for any auditory gym surgery. He wants visual rehabilitation to be back as early as possible and he wants the cataract surgery instead of first doing the auditory gym surgery followed by cataract surgery. So we plan the cataract surgery in this patient and these are the keratometry readings. So the challenges which I'm going to face in this patient is apart from the poor visibility because of the two double hereditary regium. Pupil is going to be an issue here. It looks to be a rigid pupil and because it's not dilating well enough and I'm also expecting the iris to be floppy because uh, he's on antiprostate drugs for some time now. So let's see how things turn out. The side ports are made and uh, the anticapsule is stained and as I'm putting the OVD into the eye, I expect the pupil to dilate a little bit and then I'm going to take a call on whether to use in pupil expansion device or not. This is a rigid pupil as it doesn't dilate on injection of OVD so I need to do a stretching of the pupil to break some of the sphincter so that the pupil enlarges in size and after that the iris is going to become very floppy. So for that I would want to use a device which holds the iris in place. So that is my plan here. So I'm going to stretch the pupil in typical fashion which I describe quite often. I do it in four meridians and uh, as I'm stretching I can feel the uh, sphincters giving way at least in a couple of occasions. Well this was intentional because we wanted to break those so fibrous strands or rigid pupil. This is when the pupil actually dilates. At this point the pupil is actually dilated well enough for me to complete the surgery but I'm going to use the PHEX device primarily as a device to deal with the flopping of the iris. Once the sphincters are torn and the pupil is dilated there is a chance that the iris will become extremely floppy. Holding the iris in place becomes important and this is where the BHEX comes in handy. So in this situation predominantly it is a device to hold the iris in place rather than an expansion device because expansion has already happened now. It is tricky to place the BHEX ring when the pupil is quite well dilated. This part of the notches have disengaged. I come back and re-engage these notches. So I am now certain that the, all the notches are engaging the pupillary margin. Time to perform rexus. Once we show that the pupil is well dilated and the iris is maintained in its place, most of the steps of the surgery is become quite easy. A excess of adequate size is created followed by hydrodissection. Nucleus rotation confirms that it is totally free from its attachment to the capsular bag. Time to emulsify the nucleus. The nucleus is around grade 3 to grade 4 and moderately hard and my typical strategy in such cases would be to create a small trench initially so that I can bury my phaco tip deep into the substance of the nucleus and then perform vertical chop. This is a typical strategy which I follow in most nucleus which are slightly on the harder range. The nucleus divided into smaller fragments and then each of these smaller pieces is emulsified in a controlled manner. Half of the nucleus is emulsified, time to replenish the OVD. The remaining hemineucleus is dealt with similarly. Point to note here is that the iris is still behaving well, it's a good sign. The last piece is hidden somewhere under the iris and just manipulated out into the visual axis and then emulsified.
time to aspirate the cortex. Since the visualization is quite good, it's not that difficult to aspirate the cortex and it is completed quite easily. As I'm trying to inject OVD into the bag, now is the time I see the iris trying to come out through both of the side ports, even with the VX ring still on. A single piece hydrophobic intraocular lens is implanted into the bag and during this moment we can see that the iris is coming out through both of these side ports. So the iris is showing its floppy nature now, the lens is gently manipulated into the bag. Using the micro forceps to remove the BHEX ring, it is disengaged through the side port and then once all the notches are disengaged, it's very easily explanted out of the eye. A time to remove the OVD for both in front and behind the lens. As I'm trying to do that, you can see the iris has now become really floppy and is trying to come out through the side port, also hinting to come to the main port. At this stage, it's really not much significance because the surgery is almost complete. So it was good that the iris held off well until now and now it's showing its true colors. During the stromal hydration, the iris tries to peep out and care is taken that the iris is not sticking on at the side port before closing. So once we are sure about that, we close the eye, that's it. And this is the first day picture, the cornea shows edema which is expected. By day 3 it is looking good and the patient is having a good vision. That's it, thank you for watching and hope you found this helpful.